Buddha's last teaching was to tell his followers to attain awakening by being uncomplacent, by not being heedless. If you look at the damage we do to ourselves day in, day out, the limitations we place on ourselves, the trouble we cause ourselves, it comes from our complacency, our heedlessness. On the one hand, we don't have much of a sense of what we're actually doing, and on the other, we have very little sense or try to deny the consequences of what we're doing. Because as the Buddha pointed out, there's just so much in our experience from moment to moment to moment that we're actively creating. We have, a, we have a role in constructing our experience. The raw material comes in from the past, but we're constantly working it into this, working it into that. And then we experience the consequences of our actions, even the five khandhas. He says, it's the khand of fabrication or sankara. That's the one that molds the others from potentials into actual, an actual experience of the khandhas. He says, from this potential for form, we create forms. From the potential for feeling, we create feelings, and so on with perception and consciousness as well. It's an act of creating. It's going on all the time. And then on top of that, once we have those aggregates, once they're present to our awareness, okay, then we create our sense of self out of them. I'm this, I'm that. And our sense of self will change over time. But so often it's, it creates suffering for ourselves. Latching onto this, latching onto that, and then it turns on you. Because whatever you create is got to be subject to wearing away, aging, illness, and death, like we chanted just now. It's part of the fine print that we didn't want when we, when we signed on. But it's there. You can't deny it. And so the question, given this fact that we do have such a creative role in our experience, is what we're going to do with it. And the first thing you have to do is just become sensitive to that fact, exactly how much you are creating things, how much you're adding on to experience all the time. So the first thing you want to create is a state of mind where you can see these things clearly. That's what the beginning of the path is, to get ourselves to a point where you can begin to see, oh, I'm doing this, I'm making that choice. And this particular choice is what's causing pain. This particular choice ends the pain. You want to be in a position where you can see that clearly. We get into the present moment not to enjoy the wonder of life, but to see exactly how much we're creating life, how much we're creating our own experience, where it's skillful, where it's not. And so the question is, now that you've got these khandhas, what are you creating out of them? Are you creating more suffering, or are you creating the path to the end of suffering? And your sense of self, which direction is it leading you to? Because you notice when the Buddha teaches, he doesn't have you drop your sense of self immediately. He teaches you how to have a, a more responsible, more skillful sense of self. Because after all, the mind is going to focus on, well, there's, I'm here, I'm there. So even up to the state of non-returning, there's going to be a vague sense of I. At that point, it's not identified with the khandhas, but there's still that sense of I that's just how, somehow hangs around them. So if you're going to have that sense of I, you learn how to create a skillful one. An I that tries to be virtuous, an I that tries to be skillful in every situation, both in terms of what you do and, in, and say on the outside level, and then on what you think on the inside level. So you're sitting here, your I right now is the meditator the person trying to be mindful. Okay, that's a much more skillful eye or a much more skillful sense of self than a lot of other things you could be doing right now. So hang on to it while it's skillful. Try to get 
one with a sense of mindfulness, one with a sense of immersion in the breath. And even though there may be a sense of I in there, it doesn't matter. As long as it's pulling you away from the more unskillful senses of I that you've had in the past, that's okay. Because you're putting yourself more and more in a position where you can begin to see these things clearly. And then you can peel away the unskillful parts. But in the meantime, just try to be one with the breath. There's the breath and there's the knower. We'll let those things come together. Don't try to take them apart yet. Try to get absorbed into the breath. In the same way that a pad of butter gets melted into bread, a piece of bread just seeps down into the holes and just saturates the bread. That's the kind of awareness you want to have that gets saturated into the breath and fills the body throughout. And that way you're taking these khandhas in the present moment, your sense of self in the present moment, you're making them, creating more skillful ones, creating less pain for yourself, actually creating the path out of pain, out of suffering. Because you realize that if you don't do this, you're just going to keep creating those unskillful relationships to yourself. We're always worried about our relationships to people outside, but our relationship to ourselves is very unskillful, and that's a lot more basic. How do you relate to your own thoughts? How do you relate to your perceptions? Learn how to relate in more skillful ways. You can't let go of anything until you've become skillful at it. The one exception being sex. As the Buddha says, the most skillful thing you can do with sex is to let go of it. But other things like learning how to hold on to what you should hold on to, what your sense of I should be, where your attachments should be. Okay, you have to learn how to be more skillful in your attachments. Learn how to latch on to mindfulness, latch on to concentration. Latch on to the sense of the breath and the deeper states of concentration that you can get into. Okay, those are good places to hold on to. As in the image of the bird in the cage, there comes a point where you can latch on to the door. And when the door swings open, you're out. These things are the door. But that quality of non-complacency has to underlie all your practice. Realizing that willy-nilly you are in a position where you're constantly creating experience. Whether you consciously bought into that situation or not, well, that's, that's not the issue. This is where you are. And so you've got to be more responsible about how you shape that experience more responsible to yourself. Because if you got complacent, you become your own worst enemy. And we look at the events that have been happening in our country for the past couple of months, and a large element is created by complacency, carelessness, heedlessness. Not just specific individuals, but the society as a whole seems to be very heedless. And makes decisions and does things without thinking that consequences will ever come back at them. And, but they can't help but not come back. Can't help but come back. And then we're surprised when they do. And that's, that's someone who's really heedless. And so when we're in this heedless state like this, we cause ourselves all kinds of damage. It's as if we had malice to ourselves. When I mean, the consequences are the same. There's a passage that the Buddha says, if you're angry, you do to yourself things that your enemy would wish on you. You look ugly when you're angry. You can, in a f quick decision, you can destroy relationships, you can destroy your belongings, all kinds of stuff that you can just really tear apart in a moment of anger. 
the kinds of things that would make an en enemy happy. But with carelessness, with heedlessness, you're doing the same thing. It's that heedless moment that says, well, I don't care. Okay, that's, that's not wishing yourself well. That's not compassion for goodwill for yourself when you allow yourself to be heedless that way. You're constantly creating your experience. This, this principle of cause and effect keeps coming over and over again. So you want to put yourself, one, in a position of strength so that you can easily create skillful states of mind, skillful states of being for yourself. And that's a lot of what the concentration is for, to create that sense of ease that gives you the energy, that gives you the strength you need. So this need to be vigilant, this need to be careful and heedful is, is not exhausting. And then apply the qualities that come with concentration, mindfulness, alertness, discernment, to seeing even more subtle levels where you might still be complacent, where you're still missing cause and effect, to the point where you can finally take it all apart. It's then that you're free. And until you reach that point, you know, there's Constant vigilance is required. Because otherwise you're destroying yourself. You can't pull out and say, I don't like the sound of this, I'm going to go back to my old ways. Well, go back to your old ways and you're just creating more suffering for yourself. The only thing to do is just stay right here and be as skillful as you can. That's what makes all the difference in the world, is that intention to be skillful. And the mindfulness and the determination that keep it going. Because it's that mindfulness and determination, you put those two together, what have you got? You've got vigilance, you've got heedfulness. That's why the Buddha stressed it so much in his last talk, because those are the qualities that make all the difference.